What is going on guys? So I'm taking a little break from my how to sell used tools on eBay videos because uh, I had a pretty good haul and uh, I wanted to make sure that I get these listed, I get these posted because if you're like me, uh, you buy stuff, you go to garage sales, you go to thrift stores, you get a bunch of stuff and you're super excited about it and then you're excited to get back out there and get some more. Uh, but I got to get this stuff listed. Otherwise, it is going to be a huge mess in my storage. And I don't want that. I want to make the money and then I can get out there and source again. So today I'm going to be showing you what I got, what I picked up, uh, why I picked it up and how much I think I'm going to be getting for some of these items. It's going to be a pretty cool video. Um, you know, right now I'm hopefully showing a time lapse of me getting it all pictured and and taken care of because otherwise, uh, you know, it's just going to be sitting here and I don't want it to sit here. I want it to make money. So let's see what I got and what it's going to be worth. All right, so I got most of my stuff listed and pictures taken, so I'm super excited. Uh, it was kind of a long morning, but you know what? It's important. We got to get this stuff done and I did it. So. Let's talk about some of the things that I picked up. Uh, first, kind of interesting, but I picked up a rack that goes in the back of the car. If you watched our most recent podcast, somewhere up here, uh, you'll notice that I talked about this rack. I paid $40 for it, and I paid $10 for a bike rack. So between the two of these racks, I paid $50, same place, and it was a bit of a nightmare getting it set up on my car and having to drive around with it the rest of the time while I was at garage sales, but it's really cool because 50 bucks, I sell these bike racks all the time for close to 100. Uh, maybe a little less depending on the, the brand that it is. This is a bell that I picked up. Uh, so it's not quite as much as some of the other brands, uh, Thule or Saris or those other brands. You could typically make a little bit more, uh, but I still do good with these locally. And I'm excited about the rack because I'm gonna be able to use it for some things around my house and then sell it and it's going to be a good little profit. So I'm really excited about this one. All right, the next thing that I picked up were these Sunita clogs. Now I do really good with clog shoes. Um, the Dansko or Sunita, uh, the nice thing is they're really easy to tell like the model number or what size, they've got the size right there on them. And they do really well. I'm not 100% sure who wears these. I think nurses, um, I'm not 100% sure who's buying these most of the time. Uh, but the plain black ones do really good, but so do different colored ones. So I picked up one that's got some color on it and these do really well. Even ones that have like lots of patterns and designs. These are good, easy pickups. They're easy to, to, to list and they sell for pretty good profit. All right, the next thing is this uh, little translator thing. It's a German translator uh, or a bunch of different languages. I'm not 100% sure. And it's weird because now with smartphones, right? Hold mine right now. Uh, with smartphones, you would think that who needs this stuff, but these still sell. And I picked this up for a dollar and when you pick up something like this for a dollar and you can sell it for 20, 30 bucks, depending on the unit, especially if it's unopened, uh, it's really a great deal. Uh, people are still looking for these to replace old ones or they're traveling and they don't want to rely on a smartphone. Maybe they don't have a smartphone. Uh, and so you can, if you find these for cheap, definitely pick them up. Uh, at the same place I got it at Swap Me, I at the same booth, I picked up for another dollar, uh, this old time clock. Now this is like a punch in, like it actually has some of the cards with it in an unopened package. Uh, and I'm seeing that these are selling used online for parts only for a pretty decent, again, I paid a dollar for it. Uh, so I'm not expecting a huge profit on these, but I turned it in. When I plugged it in, it was like singing songs and stuff. It was pretty crazy, but it lit up, it works. Uh, I'm still gonna sell for parts. When I have uh, electronics like this that I can't, or I'm not going to fully test every functionality, I usually just list it for parts and they still sell for pretty good amount of money. Uh, so don't be afraid to say tested turns on or untested, but turns on uh, for parts only. And the nice thing is you're gonna be protected if there's returns or anything like that. We just had one where we sold something for parts only. The person complained, they put it as not item night as described because it was gonna be more work for them to fix it. And eBay totally covered us. So you're, you're always protected when you do that. So I normally don't pick up movies and DVDs, occasionally I do, uh, but I picked up a couple of movies and DVD sets that I think are actually gonna do really well. One of them is this like uh, Grand Ole Opry, I think is what it is, I don't know, it's like Country Music Awards. Uh, actually, I have a couple of those. Uh, one's gonna sell for a lot of money, but this is a DVD set. A lot of times I'll pick up sets. So the other one you see here is a, um, a Lance Armstrong. Uh, the Tour de France, it's all six of them, it's 24 hours of Lance Armstrong. Uh, if I can get a set like this, uh, usually for a dollar, two dollars at a garage sale or at a thrift store, a lot of times it's worth it because people will pay 30, 40 dollars for sets like this depending on what it is. 
especially if it's complete, uh, because, you know, if it's not streaming on Netflix, how else are they going to get it? Now, these are first time for me. So I picked up a bunch of Pez dispensers. Uh, I've never sold Pez dispensers before, but Orlando has sold them and lotted them together. And these just looked cool. I think I paid 50 cents for the whole bag. Maybe it was a dollar for the whole bag. And there's 27 Pez dispensers. There's some Star Wars ones. There's some uh, Disney ones. There's cars. There's Toy Story. Um, there's some NASCAR ones. So it's a nice little mix here. And so I don't know who's going to buy it, but a collector of some kind, or maybe they're after just one or two. Uh, they're willing to pay up for a whole lot of them to get those one or two. So I'm going to use these keywords, right? I'm going to say Disney. I'm going to say cars. I'm going to say Toy Story. I'm going to say NASCAR. I'm going to mention those Star Wars. And then hopefully, even if someone's just looking for one or two of these, they're willing to pay for the lot. Now, these were pretty cool. I picked up uh, two different smoke alarms. Uh, they're like smoke alarm carbon monoxide detector, uh, the, the two in one, which is really nice because I have just put a, a new smoke alarm and a carbon monoxide detector in my son's room and I didn't buy a two in one, so I have two different things in there now. Uh, but these are cool because they're new, unopened, and there's two of them. I paid up a little bit. I paid $5 each for these, which, you know, it would have been great if I could have got them cheaper. So I paid $10 for both, but they sell for $30, $40, sometimes $50 each. And if someone's trying to replace the exact same models they already have in their house, they're willing to get these older ones and, you know, they're new. And one listing, two quantity. It's always a win. I'm willing to pay up a little bit when that happens. I picked up some weird stuff too. I picked up these bongos here and I paid $5 for them. There weren't comps on this specific brand, but I'm seeing some bongo selling for, you know, okay, 40, 50 bucks. And I thought if nothing else, my son would have fun. He's always wanting to drum on things. So I figured instead of pots and pans, at least these will sound better and not ruin my stuff. So worst case, I've got them listed. If they don't sell in six months or so, then it's just a toy for my son. So always think dual purposes. If you can get something cheap enough, are you willing to keep it or give it as a gift to somebody? And sometimes it's worth it, even if it's not a huge profit. I picked up a couple of Dale Earnhardt stuff, which is really neat. My dad was a huge Dale Earnhardt fan, so it brings me back to my childhood. Uh, in fact, the shirt I got sitting up right here, I uh, also got a snapback hat, and that's really cool uh, to have those two different things. Um, the snapback hat's a little bit dirty. It's got stuff on the back, but you know what? Um, worst case scenario, I'll wash it and keep it, but I still think I'm gonna get a pretty good uh, profit on this one. I paid 25 cents for the hat. I paid 50 cents for the shirt. It's a win. And I also picked up when I got those shirts, uh, some old school, legitimate ugly sweaters. Like these aren't ugly sweaters like made that you go buy an ugly sweater and an ugly sweater rack at Target. These are like a grandma wore these and thought they were cute, but they're now, you know, the ugly sweater. So you can actually get a little bit more a lot of times for the vintage ugly sweaters uh, because they're authentic and you can kind of tell that it's authentic. I picked up a Cricut machine and, you know, Cricut machines or cry cut machines. I, I like cry cut better. It sounds like, I don't know. Anyways, but the Cricut machines, um, I've done really well on these, but this one, I bought it and I was so excited because I was getting so many other things at this garage sale. She said $5. I didn't even look it over. I just said, yeah, I'll take it. Uh, and then it doesn't have the power cord, which is fine. I can still test it. I have power cords, uh, but it's going to definitely reduce the value. It didn't come with any cartridges, uh, but for five bucks, it's still, I could easily sell this for $40, $50 locally. Um, and even if I don't, $5, it's not the end of the world. Uh, even if I have to part it out, sometimes you can sell just the, just the cutting blades or just pieces of it. Uh, I'm going to make my money back one way or another on this cricket machine, but it's a reminder. Sometimes you got to slow down and get too excited. Now, one of the reasons I was excited at this garage sale is I picked up some really awesome RC cars. Now there's two of them and this cool stand and a uh, remote controller. I paid $20 for all of it, right? The remote controller alone, I could sell for 40 bucks. And you know, I, I'm, I need to test these. I need to check them out a little bit. I'll probably go local. I tend to do better with these local. Um, and the nice thing with them is even though it doesn't have the body, the frame body things on the top, those are really cheap. People will replace them all the time. Uh, so they'll sell just the way they are. Um, and again, worst case scenario, part it out for pieces, the little receivers, things like that. Um, and if I decide I wanna you know, do some RC in, I might. One of them was kind of cool. It's belt driven. I hadn't seen that before, but I guess certain RC races require belt driven uh, cars. So one of them's a belt driven car. I honestly don't know if that makes it more or less valuable at this point. I'll have to do some research. Uh, so if you know, let me know in the comments. Are, do you do RC cars? What should I be looking for? Where's the value? And uh, you know, I'd like to, that's a niche I think that it's, it's tough to break into because people know what they have and know what they uh, are looking for. So it's a little bit harder to break into that. But if you can still find a collector who's getting rid of stuff, you might be able to get some good deals.
All right, so while I was at the swap meet, I picked up this uh, Sega Genesis Classic, so it's the reboot, so it's not an original Sega Genesis. That was my first console. I love Sega Genesis, it was a ton of fun. Uh, but the main reason I picked it up, he wanted to sell just the console itself for like $45, $50. And I told him, I said, look, that's what they sell for on eBay. Uh, so I talked him down to $20 on the console. And I mostly wanted it because I wanted to test the game. So he sold me the games for $4 a piece. And the cool thing about these games is they still have uh, the cartridges in them. They work. I tested them all. And a lot of them have the manuals too. So these are selling, some of them, for $15, $15 to $25 a piece. These games are selling. And now I have a console that I can test Sega Genesis games. Uh, so it's important if you're going to sell games to, uh, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's important to have a console that you can actually test. Does the Nintendo 64 game work? Does the Super Nintendo game work? So having a console in your testing area, it's really useful. So now I have one, and these games themselves are going to pay for the console by far. And the console has 80-some games on it, so who knows? I could play some Mortal Kombat with my son. Speaking of which, the new movie just came out. Uh, let me know what you think about it. I watched it, and uh, it was interesting, but uh, brings me back to my, my good old days. Finish him! I also picked up some Walkmans. Now, Walkmans are really cool. I picked these up for 25 cents each. Um, they sell for parts all the time. I haven't tested them yet, but at the same garage sale, I also picked up a bunch of tapes. I usually don't pick up tapes, cassette tapes, uh, but I opened up this box. They wanted like a dollar for it. I opened up the box and uh, I just scanned or researched two of them just to see what they sell for. And the two that I researched sold for four to five dollars a piece. I'm like, you know, what? I'm going to make my money back. And at least I have some some tapes now I could test. I have a tape somewhere that I used for testing in the past, but I don't know where it is. Uh, so and it came with a cool case, which I can use for storage. I also picked up this VHS or VCR camcorder, uh, old camcorder, right? Like a legitimate older one. And um, I need to test it still. It has the battery packs. I just plug those in, uh, but the batteries are dead. And that's a hard part too is, you know, you get on a roll and you're, you're, you're doing stuff. I save that towards the end and then I realize it's dead. I got to charge it for a little bit. So I'm gonna have to wait to actually test that one out to list it. Uh, but again, paid like three or four dollars for it. I could probably sell this for anywhere from 40 to 80 bucks. Uh, and again, things like this, you can even part out, right? You can part out as, as used for parts only, or you can sell like just pieces of it. Sometimes people, pieces of theirs break. So you can sell those. I, I prefer not to do that if possible, uh, but I know I'm going to make my money back on this. And if you can get, we've talked about bolos in the past, uh, little camcorders, the, the, the HD ones, the hard drive ones, or the little mini DVD ones, they still sell. People are buying those all the time. Last but not least, I picked up these cool old slot cars, these Tyco slot cars, and uh, I set it up or I tried to set it up and I couldn't get it working, which is a bit of a bummer. Uh, I paid $20 for the box, uh, but the tracks alone sell for money. Uh, the cars sell for a lot of money. The two cars that I got specifically aren't the most sought after ones, but some of the cars are selling for $40, $50 a piece. Uh, and so I think I'm gonna lot these out cars separately, the tracks separately, and I, I know I'm going to make, uh, you know, probably at least $50 once I once I sell the tracks. I'm not gonna sell the tracks separately as like individuals, but I'll lot like all of the straight pieces together, all of the curved pieces, or maybe just count, like put them all in one pile and just say like how many curved, how many straight. Because uh, if people are trying to add to their track, they can do that. Uh, now the controller itself, I don't know if those work, but I could sell the controllers for parts um, untested. Uh, because like I said, I couldn't get it working. Maybe there was something connection wise, but it's one of those things where I can spend an hour working on it, maybe fix it, but it's not going to be worth my time uh, to to try and do that. I'm, I'd rather just cut my losses, sell it as is. But now I have a new Bolo. I'm looking for these little slot cars, these little Tyco, uh, and I'm not actually sure. Uh, I, I mentioned on the previous podcast what the name of the these specific slot cars are, uh, but slot cars can sell for a lot of money. So definitely check them out. All right, guys, hopefully you guys thought that this was helpful, that you saw some of the things I picked up, picked up a few bolos, how I do things. Uh, maybe you just got encouraged that you need to list some stuff because if you're like me, death pile like I had can last for weeks if I'm not on it. So get sourcing, get listing, and get those things up. And let me know in the comments down below, what's the best find that I had here? Where do you think I'm gonna make the most money? And uh, I'll see you next time. Peace.